Y254 Imagine Thank you so much for sticking to Y254 TV. You are watching the Power Talk Show and I am your host, Sherry Blessing. Now, before we went on our break, we were trying to understand what are the qualities of a good woman. We posted this question on our social media platforms, which is at Y254, and we wanted to hear some of your comments and some of your questions. And in studio with me is Belinda and Sharon, who have been helping us understand their experience as women and some advice they would give for how to become better women. So let me go on Facebook where you've written us some of your comments. And Bewa Masha says, watching, thank you so much for tuning in. Churchill Stevens says, honesty and humility. Very simple. I like that. That's a very good, those are good qualities of being a better woman. Kando Maina says, following, thank you so much for watching us. And uh, he also says Pamoja, and I believe that is the Palestine flag. Kando <laughs> Maina, <laughs> Ah, That's the Kenyan flag. Is it Kenyan? Yeah. Why is the white not visible like that? Sorry. <laughs> Thank you so much for, for watching us, Kando. And uh, Xavier Elumbe says, clean, God-fearing. Those are very important qualities. A woman who is clean and God-fearing. And Gift Mutunga uh, resonates with that and says, God-fearing, respect, and humble. That's, that's a very good comment. Thank you for that. Edwin Zablon says, watching from Ogembo Kera. Thank you for watching us tonight. Azela Dongo Ombuna says, watching live from Oteri, yeah, Abunga. Thank you for watching us. Russ Jerry says, respect, welcoming ETC. Siku fika kejani, amelala tu ni kama hakuoni. Russ, you ni experience gani tuambi na niyo likuwa na lala. Uh, Katrin Shiko says, in proper from Kaganda Muranga. Thank you so much for watching us, Kate. Dennis Nyongesa says, Natazama nikiwa na muesi in Bungoma County niko live. Being a good wife, she'll be humble and trustworthy to her husband. Thank you for that comment, Dennis. Frank Kigani says, watching from Kakamega. Thank you for watching us this evening. And based on the comments that we have seen, Tumona, humility is important, respect is also important, and God-fearing and clean. Those are the major comments that we've seen. Humility and respect. And most women these days, tunasemekana tukona kiburi. They say modern women have kiburi towards their men and their partners, that men find it off-putting. So let us understand, we were discussing relationships and how to be in relationships. How can we be better? Belinda, you're now a wife and you're a mother. Mm -hmm. How did you find this husband when you kasema uindo when you need to submit to him? After a heartbreak. Karibu ni tupe simu ya uyo mutu like Victoria. That's a story for another day. <laughs> yes, uh, but um, after that heartbreak, I asked God one thing. Uh, I told God that nilichoka na kujaribu. And uh, it was a prayer, and I told God that I will be patient until I get that person whom you created just for me. Yes, and I was really patient. I was not afraid of dry spell, and I waited until God revealed that person to me. We were working together, and uh, when we met, the vibe was vibing, and then, uh, you know, I resigned from uh, the, the place I was working, and we are still together up to t today. So when you were one thing led to another, yes. and here you are. Yes. But then how do, you, as a woman, as mm -hmm. a wife, what are some of the things that you noticed he the was qualities. very keen on? Yes, what mm -hmm. are some of the qualities in your kwa kwambia? This is what I want in a woman. This is what I want in a wife. This mm -hmm. is what I want in the mother of my children. What are those qualities that have helped you sustain your relationship? Um, humility and uh, how I handle conflicts. I am one person when uh, I'm mad, I don't react immediately. I take some time because, you know, patience, with patience, uh, it reveals the magnitude of the conflict. So sometimes, you know, if you react immediately, you will find later on that this, whatever you are arguing about, was not even worth it. So 
what really impressed him about me was how I handle conflicts and uh, how I know how to cook. You know, he's Luya. Yeah. So, of course, the way to a man's heart is through the, the stomach. stomach. Yes. And another um, thing uh, that he was really interest, I, interested in about me was uh, how God-fearing I was. I, or I am, t I am till to date. I am God-fearing and um, how I also treat him. I make him feel like a man. I constantly encourage him. Um, I also constantly praise him, like tell him the good side. I don't focus on his weaknesses. I focus on his strengths because at the end of the day, I understand that we are all human and our weaknesses are also very important for us to embrace. So I've embraced him both with his strengths strengths and weaknesses yes that's very very well said yeah. and some of the qualities you've said have been mentioned you. by yes. our our viewers and come on you and you're a woman and you're wondering how can i find a good man and sustain a relationship you've just had some of the qualities that men are looking for and that help you sustain men because once you build up a man then he feels validated he feels like he's masculine and comfortable and humility the cooking being a good wife and submitting being a good partner basically is what people are looking for but when you're submitting you can only submit to someone who has a mission submission you sub you sub from the submission don't look for just anyone then you submit yes. if you have a mission automatically a woman will submit but if you're missionless you don't know where you're going to women will never submit to you as a man that is true that yes. is very true because yes. we also want someone who's a leader mm -hmm. and if you're not a strong leader then how can i follow you yes. now let's talk about sponsors because we have so many young ladies these days who've opted for money over love money over relationships that are sustainable sharon what's chana wengi wadogo young ladies today are opting for sponsors and dating people who are wealthy and people who can give them a lifestyle that is much much higher than what they have right now what is your idea what is your impression on things like that do you think it is right for people to have sponsors or is it a wrong ideology that we have pushed to society as a modern woman as a modern woman or as a young lady mm -hmm. i feel like if i'm being honest I really don't want to judge people, but I feel like uh, wherever the society is headed, it's like we've taken, you know, uh, someone said, Ato kijifanya upendi pesa, wanaume watakutesa bado. And I was <laughs> like, uh, hold on, wait. Kind of makes sense, but well. So I feel like um, we, 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 are, we are too thirsty for, you know, things that won't last long. And... In my experience, I would say, yeah, Wababas have approached me and sometimes I'm one person who divests and I'll, I'll, I'll befriend them and listen to them. What exactly are these older men? Well, not older, older, older men, but for me, 30 plus, I'm sorry, if you're my friend and you're 30 plus, <laughs> you when in Baba, I'm <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Yeah, so <laughs> sometimes I befriend them and listen to them, like, what exactly are they looking for in younger women? And you find most of them are like, you know, this younger lady, you can go with them anywhere, you know. They know younger women are looking for quicker skins. Like, mm -hmm. if you just show up with money, then y you got her. You oh, got her. They don't really so have to invest so much of themselves into these relationships. Yeah. And at times I also uh, speak with some and someone will tell you as much as they look for younger ladies, they want, they don't, they don't just pick anyone. They want someone if you listen to them and most of them are there like, if I could be with her, how can I help her? What is her mindset? So sometimes they'll ask you questions and they'll be like, does she need to invest in anything or mm. is she just here for the, you know, for the good times mm, and the vibes. The vibes and yeah. inshallah. So mm. Belinda was burning with a comment. Can you <laughs> add on that before I ask the next yes, question? She said that um, the Wababas 
or the mubabas are looking for younger ladies because they can go anywhere. Does it mean that older women are trees? <laughs> they can't uh, move. Uh, they, you know? But they can't go to Shere. You know, maybe the older women will not be, they'll not go to a club and start dancing. And uh, I no. guess that is what you meant. Now on that, I'll say something. I, I saw someone saying about, you know, looking for honesty, someone who is humble, and the difference between the woman of now and, you know, the olden days, as much as there's toxicity, uh, sometimes I ask people, you're looking for someone who can be your peace. Are you giving them the peace that you want from them? Mm -hmm. Because you cannot tell me, I want someone who will be my peace, but you're there, you want me to allow, you, uh, you know, to accept you for your cheating habits, for mm -hmm. your abusive habits, for being violent now that's the difference right now because when women notice you're violent you're cheating they walk away mm. instead yes. of you know yes. so such things that's the difference between the women now the women the now women and the women uh, back in the days and mm. back in the days yeah men were more respectful and but still these things used to happen, domestic yes. abuse and everything. But women would, you know, suppress it in the name of, I don't want to mm. break my family, watch an and all Children. that. So mm. as much as you want someone to be your peace, make sure you can be their peace as well. As you well. want someone, I always tell people, yes, it's okay to set standards. Personally, if I speak from experience, yeah, I want a soft life, but right now I cannot start dating someone and expecting them to take me to you know to for vacation to maldives and stuff can i even take myself to coast so as much as you're setting standards have have dreams and standards but are they realistic i mm. want someone who can buy me a car can i buy myself a motorbike yeah. i can't so if i can't why am i putting so much pressure on someone and sometimes when i tell people that they tell me you're giving pick me behaviors but I feel like we need to be very, you know, realistic. Yes. And, and yeah, don't lower your standards, ourselves. but be, be realistic. And I like that you've brought up that conversation because the next question I was going to ask is people who want to date people who are well off than them. Someone who's wealthy, someone who can buy you a car, buy you a house, but without being at that level where even personally as a lady are you classy can you be taken to a classy event and actually show up looking the part because yes. there was a gentleman who said there are guys who will fly out a lady but then she gets there and she doesn't look the part she doesn't look like where she's <laughs> gone <laughs> So what, Belinda, what are your thoughts on that? Because now we see so many ladies who are dating for money and dating because I want this guy to buy me this and they don't want to build with someone from scratch. They want someone who's already at the top and when they let to give you. What are your thoughts on that? Um, you want to become a, a soft life ambassador? That's not wrong. Everyone can become a soft life ambassador. True. But... You can do it by yourself. You don't have to date a man for you to become, or a wealthy man for you to become a soft life ambassador. You can make it on your own. And uh, most women think that they can't make money on, on their own. They must be attached to a wealthy Mubaba somewhere for them to live the life that they dream of. It is good to have dreams. And what surprises me most is that most people don't know that dreams come true if you believe in it. You can also do it by yourself. And uh, there is a, wi a women's uh, conference that I'm running called How to, How to Become a Soft Life Ambassador. Make it on your own. Then now look for that person you think is rich. Add to it, add to his richness or add to his wealth. So that if by any chance you disagree with this guy, they don't strip you of everything, then you get depressed, you commit suicide, simply because people will get to laugh at you. Make it. Just start small. And you don't have to be ashamed of your background. I personally, I was from a, a, a humble background, humble blessed background. Yes. I stay, Yes, I stayed in the slums grew up in the slums and I decided to use that for my own benefit, use that pain I went through, the days that we could go hungry, the days that we could take sugarless porridge, 
to make a life and to inspire people out of that. And that is why I have my story at five. The shortest book you'll ever read, it's a one-page document. And I followed God's, I heard, vo I heard God's voice, wrote the story, published it, and right now it's a bestseller on Amazon. Mm -hmm. So I'm using my past to make money, to fund the lifestyle that I want. I don't have to rely on my husband to, for me to do some things. And sometimes I also surprise him with gifts. Mm -hmm. Yes, because it's a two-way traffic. You cannot expect to be given if you can't give. The same way she said, you want peace, but you cannot give peace. Yes. So if you want money, also give money. Mm -hmm. Yes. Or that I like what you've said. You have to elevate yourself to get to that point where you meet a man who's also elevated. Exactly. If you're not willing to become better yourself, if you're not willing to make money by yourself, yes. how will you even go to the same places where these people are, mm. you know? So I want us to also talk about dating. In this day and time, tunambiwa usi date mtu moja, date multiple people, because as we talked about earlier, women tend to get so immersed in relationships that you forget yourself. And then... And then, unapata time in a song, umeka three years na umtu, na ujama si buwana ako. Mnaachana and you have to start again. Sharon, what's your idea? Do you think it's, it's important for people to date multiple people to see the options? Or should we just date one person? Iki kata unenda kwa the next one. Well, I'll say it plainly. Uh, pick what works for you. Because uh, right now, we call it the rosa. And everyone is like, you know, the problem is women get very attached once they get into a relationship. So sometimes uh, the, the, the challenges we face is you could be, you know, you consider this guy your boyfriend, you do everything and, you know, you stay loyal to him. But uh, now the problem kidogo with men is men still wait their <laughs> options. I mean, you're just a girlfriend, you're not my wife, so... Let me, let me weigh my options. So I feel like um, as much as people are trying to normalize the roster and everything, because I don't want to say personally, but uh, that's something I don't think it works for me, because I feel like, I don't know, tuta heal mbinguni. So you <laughs> break my heart. Tu heal mbinguni. Went to kae. Iyo siku ikifika uamue, you know what? And, you know, women, women always notice, but at times I feel like we do for the plot a lot that... So, for me, uh, if you decide I'll stick to one person, if you show me shege, then I'll leave you with your shege and, and, and you know... Send hapo. You know, women, we usually say that, but you give someone ten chances and they have shown you shege from the first time. Yeah, they probably <laughs> cheated, but you're in love. You're like, I'll change him. He loves me. He apologized. Ten side chicks later, and you're still there. So at what point do you really understand that this man is not the man for me? I am better than him, and I need to stop playing these games. Belinda, at what point do us women, mm -hmm. do we, should we realize we are the perfect package at the wrong address? When should we stop? To it is good to know your value as a woman. Um, we measure time in the same way. The same measurement does not mean the same value. Two people can be 25 years old, all of them, that is the same measure, but they value their lives differently. So as a woman, you need to know your value. What am I worth? And the moment someone shows you their true character once, that is who they are. So don't expect them to change just for you. If you're willing to stay with this kind of hooliganism or mediocrity for the rest of your life, then that's well and good. Mm -hmm. But if you're not willing to stay with that, then move out for your own sake, for your emotional beat, for your spiritual beat, even for your physical. Because if someone cheats on you, they might even bring some uh, STDs to you. They might bring other things alongside depression to you. So once you get to know someone's real character and you're not comfortable with it, 
to the left, to the left. <laughs> you know, to the left. I to like the left. that. Yeah, because <laughs> we. I, we tend to give people chances and say, no, you know, he loves me. It's just one time. But that is who they've shown you they are. And now in alignment to that, because you've just talked about the STDs and whatnot, let's talk about hygiene, feminine hygiene. Most women do not even know how we're supposed to take care of ourselves internally and, you know, our reproductive mm -hmm. system and all of that. Mm -hmm. we, you find someone is even using scented soaps and whatnot, and it's not advisable. So how can we understand, Belinda, how can we become better at taking care of our feminine hygiene? Yes, uh, we need to understand, first of all, that um, the body, the body houses the spirit, and our spirit has a soul which is housed in the body. So you might be very okay uh, spiritually and emotionally, but if you don't take care of your body, then the spirit will go and the soul will go. Your time here on earth will be cut short or be shortened. So as a woman, you need to know that. Can I go into the details of cleaning the body? Maybe Did not, not <laughs> graphically. But, <laughs> <laughs> but please do, because there are women out there who really need the information. Yes, as a woman, it's good to t shower twice in the morning and in the evening because we sweat and when we sweat bacteria is down there at our Bermuda Triangle you understand yes. yes so we are supposed to shower twice and apart from that use soap that is not actually it's good to use uh, water just water without soap when you're cleaning your Bermuda and then we need to make sure that we shave don't put Karura forest everywhere you know, when you do your hands like these people see, you know, something that is not pleasant. Shave. There are shaving creams. We have the blades. We have different uh, modes of uh, keeping shaving. of shaving. Cleaning. Yes. And then it is good also to, you know, wash or clean your hair from time to time. Don't have one hairstyle for six months and you're not cleaning it. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it has some stench. And you might wonder why is my husband sleeping facing the other side all the time. And uh, it can also bring conflicts because he doesn't want to hear the smell from your hair. But he's just trying to be gentle. And within no minutes, you'll find that, you know, the conjugal rights are not being met and it brings issues. So we need to take care of our hair. You need to look good, make up, groom, make sure that you wash your inner garments daily. Don't repeat it. Don't reuse it. And after some time, after like six months, between three to six months, dispose them by others because they carry bacteria. And after washing your inner garments, you also have to hang them outside so that they can get direct sunlight. This, with, with this will also kill the bacteria that are in your inner garments. Mm -hmm. Yes. And you see, that's, that's important because... Sometimes we hang our things in the bathroom yes, and, and you forget about towel. it. And you even put a towel, it. you know? And you know even the quality. Sometimes mm -hmm. you advised cotton over silk, silk. Yes. and things like that. Mm -hmm. These are some of the lessons that... Th this one is mm. also not very good. Yes, the, the, the thongs and yes, what thongs. we <laughs> need to <laughs> say all this thing because yes. these are some little things mm -hmm. that we are not taught uh -huh. but we need to learn. Mm -hmm. I want to also understand the, the value of gynecologists. Mm -hmm. Sharon, do you think it's important for ladies all ages to have gynecologists? Well, I believe it's it's important as much as you know affording a gynecologist uh, might be expensive but uh, now to answer on that not really a gynecologist I feel like especially for a grown woman uh, I led to a point uh, you know we are we are grown women but I feel like women at times tend to forget themselves especially with their sexual partners uh, you know, as a woman, you need to understand your body. And, you know, for people who have rosters and, you know, multiple partners or just one partner, you know, they, there's cleanness after getting intimate with someone because people just get intimate with people and you just leave or you go get intimate with someone, get into oral sex, and you do not even... Sometimes people don't even know these people that mm -hmm. deep. 
And you know this notion of, hey, babe, can you trust? Imagine, checky. Now, mm. kupenda, but siku trust. Uh, like, I, I'm not a doctor, you're not a doctor, so... You can't measure with your eyes. And you're yeah, not and putting on a, you know, exactly. a tea scan, a lens, a x-ray, lens for, on a you're looking for mapana. bacteria, no? Yeah. So, you know, as much as you're getting intimate with someone, it's not just about the HIV. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of things, you know, STIs, STDs. We need to look out for that. So yeah. when getting intimate with someone, even as a woman, you know, nowadays, as she mentioned, the thongs and the way people dress up, sometimes you go to a matatu, a cab, you look at the seat, it has stains, and you're like, oh, my God. Mm -hmm. like so hygiene is... Who was ew. seated here? Yeah. yeah. So sometimes you find ladies, you know, with their... Um, Short dresses, yeah, as the they skirts, call them, yeah, mm -hmm. and then they the want nothing. That's the so. thing. I think ladies sometimes we neglect our feminine hygiene, mm. but we need to understand we are different from men. Mm. We need to actually pay attention because you can get UTIs, you can get all these other diseases that men yeast infection that men are not prone to, and we are very prone to them. So you have to be very, very intentional about your feminine hygiene. So let me go to Facebook and read some comments before we wind up the conversation. We have uh, Dantes who says, caring and trustworthy. Bungoma Chundin Niki Washikilia Muanda Village. Thank you so much for watching us. We have Don Carlos Return says, following live from Umoja, so proud of the debate. Thank you, Don Carlos. Dan Mukurinawa Kiandutu says, honest, honesty, God-fearing, clean, beautiful, hardworking, and a good role model. Thank you for that. Bramwell Bokekedi says, Busia, and you're following us. Thank you so much for, for following us uh, from everywhere. And we are grateful for the comments that we have gotten. So one thing that I want us to touch on is role models. Because we've talked about the value of the people that we surround ourselves with and the people that we watch and who we admire. Who is a good role model? Who can you define as a good role model? Belinda, you've been an, a mentor to so many people. How would you advise someone to pick a good role model? Uh, when you're picking a, a role model or a mentor, uh, look for someone with uh, values, not someone whose morals um, are out of norm or uh, someone who does crazy things on social media. Choose someone with good values and they follow them to the latter. Choose someone who has the same interest as yours. You cannot choose a role model who is uh, Kyla Jenner. I'm not saying Kyla Jenner is bad, yes, but you want something different for yourself. Choose someone with the same dreams, the same goals, uh, someone who has been where you want to go. Because a role model is someone who guides you. So someone cannot guide you to a place or a destination that you don't want to go to. Then the last one, as a Christian, I choose someone who is God-fearing. Because at the end of the day, yes, we are human, we make mistakes, but the word of God guides us. Mm. It brings us back, it detours us back to the right path. Mm. Yes. Thank you, because that's very clear. Th your role model has to share your values, yes. has to be where you aspire to be. Exactly. And in this day and time, we have so many people. We have yes. artists who are, yes. you know, ratchet and it's mm -hmm. very glorified. Mm -hmm. Or people with multiple partners and yes. sponios and they're living the life that people think is the ideal life. Mm -hmm. So, Sharon, do you think some of these people are good role models? Or what, what, what would you say about that? Because we have so many people who are influencing even younger girls, teenagers, and children. Are they good role models for our girls? So first thing I would say is, just uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, social media is here to stay. And regardless of your age, I feel like it's a personal choice that you need to make. For example, right now, if I'm following, let's say, Cheryl, we are friends, and I feel... What the, the core reason as to why, you know, I used to admire you, I don't feel it anymore. I always feel it's, it's as simple as just unfollow because you share nothing in common with them. And that's what we should be doing. And also, um, you know, the problem is we want role models, but at times we get so obsessed with people that 
we forget ourselves. We want to be them. You don't want to be like that person. You want to be that person. And you know, as much as you admire them, you can never be them. And it's not everything they share that you share with them. Because I feel like, yes, you can have role models, but you know, uh, let's say, for example, as a media student, uh, I admire someone, and maybe there's another field that I admire someone from whatever they do. So as much as you admire people from different, you know, um, places, but at the same time, make sure they share your same core values, values, your core values. And also, someone you'd be proud to say, you know, not just because not everyone who is famous is fit to be a role model. That's true. That is very true. And then don't, don't uh, bend to, you know, the social media pressure and everything. Yes, yeah. pick your uh, role model and at the same time invest in getting to know them because I feel like social media has gotten us to a point that, um, you know, I could mask myself as a very loving person, but in reality, I'm always in scandals, but on social media, I display a very good image of myself. So yeah. if you feel that is what you've been following them for and they don't meet whatever you are looking up to them for, then mm. it's always free. You don't you need to. Choice. Yeah, because if you're following someone and you want them to be your role model and you don't share any common goals, then that's when I say that's where the obsession kicks in. That is very true. And so many people like to just follow people and follow some of these people. Some of them are toxic. I, you, sometimes I see someone and I post something on their stories. Go to their so page immediately and unfollow, unfollow because we do not share the same values. And I like what you said. We cannot be like anyone else. I cannot be Sharon, I cannot be Belinda. So I have to be the best Cheryl that I can be, inspired by the story of Belinda yes. or inspired by the life that Sharon lives. So in that, uh, as we wrap up this conversation, we just have a few minutes left. I want us to talk about toxic femininity. Belinda, mm. when you look at young ladies these days, what are some of the toxic ideologies that they have and you feel like it's damaging us as women? Comparison of each other. Simply because Cheryl has an iPhone, doesn't mean, and we went to the same school with her, doesn't mean that I also must have an iPhone. It doesn't mean if you're dating someone who bought you a Harrier, then I must also insist that my husband or my boyfriend should buy me a Harrier. So that comparison leads to depression because you'll feel like you are not enough. If you ever compare yourself with someone, you will always feel that you are not enough. Mm. But yet we are enough. We are more than enough because, because God created us more than enough. Yeah. We can make it on our own without comparing ourselves with other people. Our aim every day should be to become a better version of ourselves. And better does not come physically. Better starts in the mind. The mind is where the battlefield is. Because when I think it, I will speak it, and it will come to pass. Yeah. So whatever it is that is making you to be toxic starts in your mind. So some of these to uh, toxic uh, habits or ideologies like comparison, Another thing is um, trying to, uh, uh, co not even compare, but trying to compete, com uh, competing with someone, mm -hmm. constantly competing with someone who doesn't know you. You choose someone from social media or uh, even your neighbor, and she doesn't really care about you. Mm -hmm. Then you start competing with her. She buys red shoes, you buy red shoes. That is very toxic. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, you are not living your life. Mm -hmm. There's a reason as to why you were created. Look for your purpose. The reason as to why God created you. Then find, start following that purpose. Your yes. Because our are all different. They are you very different. You can say different. that my journey and my neighbor yes. is the same. Yes. So comparison and competing, yes. those are two toxic things you've Very noted. toxic. Sharon, what about you? Give us, uh, in less than a minute, tell us some of the toxic ideologies that you think we have today and we should get rid of them. Um... It's the same thing, uh, competition and comparison. And I feel like um, I'll just mention something. As much as, uh, especially when it comes to, you know, relationships, uh, we all want the soft life. But I always tell people, when looking for a partner, 
it's okay to have a wealthy partner. I mean, who doesn't want money would we'll be lying if we say we don't want mm. to be rich. Yeah. But I'm looking for a giver, you know, a caring person, a loving, not just wealthy. Because mm -hmm. I feel at times we forget about our mental well-being. Because personally, I feel like my we mental well-being is above everything. Because, you know, you might be wealthy and everything, but uh, you're not uh, good for my mental health. Yeah. So um, some of the things like the competition and, you know, uh, we feel like Mimi Ndoni Mesema and... Uh, trying to, uh, as I said earlier, another toxic trait is, uh, you know, trying to compare ourselves or competing with our partners. Because at the end of the day, th uh, the truth is, it's okay for us to be, you know, empowered, but we can never be men. Because most of the women right now are trying to, you know, show the masculinity in them. Yeah. Personally, I, I, I want to be a soft girl. I want to be a soft girl. So it's okay uh, to have a partner, but don't, don't try too much, you know. To show him that, you know, we are feminists, we are equal. Exactly, and that's and where it's the true. toxicity comes So let's in. wrap up the conversation because time is not on our side. And the parting shot is sometimes the strongest women are the ones who love beyond all faults, cry be behind closed doors, and fight battles that nobody knows about. And that is a very, very powerful quote. I love that we have said that. Being a woman is about who you are. What are your traits? What are you embodying? We have so many resources online that help us to understand how to become better, how to take care of ourselves. And that is going to be it for today. Thank you so much for watching us. A repeat of this show is going to happen tomorrow on Friday between 1 and 2 p.m. And we're also going to upload this show on YouTube. So stay tuned for that. Thank you so much for the entire team that has been with us, the camera operators, our producer, the TC, and everyone else. Thank you to our lovely guests who have been here today. And thank you to you back at home for watching us. Thank you for taking your time. And please stay tuned to Y254 TV. My name is Cheryl Blessing, and this has been the Power Talk Show. Imagine.